The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. The Nostalgia Funhouse proudly dedicates all episodes in the loving memory of Connie Chirac. So, Johnny, I've, I've been hearing really great things about this Nostalgia Funhouse. It just brings back so many great memories. Andrew, uh, another reason I'm going to get in line with you here is that you really vouched for this show. So, I'm just going to believe you that this is the show that you know I've been wanting, which is just talking about all the fun stuff from our yesteryear and years before uh, and i really hate anything meta so i'm glad that what we're doing right now is not that oh no definitely what is meta is, isn't that ron artessa's new name <laughs> well add world and peace to it sure <laughs> yeah but this is this is great they like last year they were like tearing play sets and halloween costumes and well they, that sounds cool they get like this weird court recordings from like pop culture courts does anybody care about court cases uh, these ones are kind of cool. They put hmm. Scott Kelvin on trial for Santa Claus there. But, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. you're. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Man. You know what's the best part about this is, though? Because I hear they always got a really great spot. You can check it out right there. I hope you realize that playing with guns is an obvious cover for your male inadequacies. Yeah? Well... Why would anyone play with dogs? Why would anyone play with you? 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 Why would anyone play with any of you? Beats us, but Burger King's got them. The Simpsons for three forty nine each when you buy new mini muffins or any size fries. To give you the Simpsons for virtually peanuts, sometimes you gotta break the rules. Hello, welcome to the Nostalgia. Do the Bartman Funhouse. That's right. Uh, oh, also, I love when I'm doing that. Uh, our uh, beautiful recording thing that we're using, Zoom, thinks that I'm trying to sing. <laughs> and a little thing will pop up on my screen saying, audio? Was singing? Question mark? And I'm like, I don't think that's what that is. <laughs> is it like me because I can't spell and like I get it spelling into Grammarly or Microsoft Word and they're like, I don't know if we could come up with anything like that. Oh, I have a quick, that reminds me, a quick side tangent that has nothing to do with what we're about to talk about. Uh, I saw this commercial, you know, uh, I have a problem with uh, AI, not Alan Iverson, he's great. Uh, yeah. But uh, AI, artificial intelligence, I think if it's an actual tool, it's fantastic. Uh, but I have a real problem with a lot of people trying to use it uh, for like creative endeavors and stuff. But anyway, there's this new thing on the new iPhone where like you can type a whole text out a whole sentence and then you'll run it through a say i and it will change it and make it quote unquote smarter for you i kind of need that i'm not gonna lie but like the reason that i hated that is because like it's sort of everybody like if i sent you a text andrew and it wasn't how i usually text you would immediately know something was up right because we everybody has a distinct way that they talk and text i feel yeah uh, so like you know, you just would never know. And I watch a lot of true crime, right? And there's been a lot of people who this are is like, where it comes into play. Yeah. <laughs> so like, how would anybody know something happened to me if I was running everything through a stupid smart AI? I, because I used the one day because most of the time when we get texting in our little group there, uh, I'm in the car going to work. Yeah. So I re- didn't realize the one day when we were talking about the X-Men Lego mansion and Matt's like, I need that, but I don't need that. And I was yeah. like, oh, and I, and I said, you know, but Bennett does his, you know, his child. Yes. And yeah. I went back and I looked at the text and it said bat. And I'm like, I hope he didn't think like I spelled it bat. Like <laughs> I said, yeah. Bennett, I'm yeah. telling you right now, I was driving and I said, Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. What are we? But what are we actually going to talk about on this show today, Andrew? Oh, Johnny, because of your wonderful, wonderful musical taste. Yeah. Just your, your, for the record, Andrew has never let me pick out an album that we've covered. <laughs> no, I. If you ever want to know, I tell Johnny this. I told him once again. I told him yesterday. So, Johnny, when it comes to music, if you've never listened to Pat and Oswald talk about him listening to music in his twenties. 
That is Johnny. I, I, I used to be way worse. I used to be a really huge music stop. I've definitely lightened up. <laughs> but, yeah, I listen to a lot of stuff. If I said their name, you'd be like, who? Yeah. yeah. It's waiting until the Nostalgia Hall of Fame stuff comes out, guys. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure I have <laughs> great picks. <laughs> just to run through for what, what we did. Let's just go through. So we have Jagged Little Pill. Great, great every album. Everybody probably owned it other than Johnny. I did not own it, but I do know of it. I yeah. know songs on it. Yeah. Dr. Dre's The Chronic. I and did it, have that album. Yeah. Okay. An iconic one. Uh, Radiohead's OK Computer. I definitely had that one. Radiohead was sort of my gateway into this other world of new music. Oh, okay. Record. And then we have, I don't even know what, I'm pretty sure the band's name is Muse, or is that the album? Yes, the band's name is Muse. Yes. Absolution. I promise you, Andrew, you're, I know you'll never check them out, but I think you would actually love them. They're very, very good, uh, heavy band. Like they actually actually are a rock band. I would say for sure. I I do like if I'm bored and I got no podcast, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, you know what? Let's see what Johnny's talking. About. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But check out uh Muse's Abel- uh that that album is so fantastic. Yeah. So that that was that was Johnny's pick. So this so I like to torture Johnny as we did. Yes. Uh, Shaq, Shaq Diesel, yes, Shaq album. So I felt like I was going to get him here with his love of The Simpsons, and I do love Simpsons, yeah. With The Simpsons sing the blues, a 1990 album where The Simpsons sing the blues, kind of. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, obviously. Been- I was- I was well aware of this album, but I never actually listened to it. I knew "Do the Black Man" because that was a big single. I knew that, that was, song, yeah. and there's that one Lisa song where she there's like an episode that that song part of that song was on. So those are the two that I knew, uh, but the rest of the album I had never actually listened to. Uh, my father bought this, so I listened to this quite a bit as a child. So there is some great nostalgia things, and two producers on this: Michael Jackson. And DJ Jazzy Jeff. That's what I'm talking about. So right well, there. There's... Also, uh, just a. Uh, this is the first Simpsons album. What? Uh, when did this come out, Andrew? 1990. Uh, let's see. Released December 4th, 1990. Recorded in September of 1990. So not all. So, of them. so this is well. This is very Bart heavy. Because you got to realize at that time Bart was the was the star of the show. He was the standout. Yes. So Everything. he was the one that they really banked around on this album. Did you have the Bart Simpson T-shirt or poster or both? I had the Bart Simpson. The probably everybody had that, like the the doll. What is oh, it? The, I forgot what it's. I had one of those, like the Burger King one. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. I had one of those. I definitely had a. Uh, when I was in elementary school, I was very happy to get one of Bart, and it was a folder, right? A little little folder to put yeah. stuff in, and it said "Eat my shorts," and I got in trouble for it because it said "Eat my shorts" at school, and uh, I and I never gotten in trouble before, so it really uh, ruined. My, I used to be a goody two shoes as when I was in elementary school, so I discovered that I was funny, and then it all went on the window. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I definitely had some Simpsons stuff for sure. What about you? I had uh, the dolls, like the from Burger King. I had a Bart Simpson t-shirt. And I also, I remember having the poster and I think it was the underachiever one. And I wasn't quite sure what an underachiever was because 1990, I'm like seven, eight years old. Yeah. So I just knew Bart was the best. I thought Bart was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're a kid, Bart was awesome. And then when I got older, I was like, oh, yeah, Homer's the one who really actually rules on this show. <laughs> yeah, because the Simpson arcade game, like, if I couldn't be Bart, I was like, oh, do I even want to play this? And then if you had to be Homer, because Homer had no weapon out of everybody. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I don't know. What you a know, great game, it. though. It, it, it game was a great awesome. game. Yeah. I just beat it the other day with my kids, so. Just Michael but, Jackson did. Yes. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> uh, all right. We're, so we're going to cover track by track. <laughs> uh, 
Simpsons Sing the Blues. The whole thing's on YouTube if you want to go back and listen to it. Yep. A uh, whole 40 minutes and 13 seconds of pure. Yeah, I will say overall thoughts, it does not overstay its welcome, which I was quite grateful for. Uh, half of the, it's not all blues. So if you don't like blues, don't worry. Uh, like some of the songs are most certainly very 90s rap. Uh, and the best song is, comes out of nowhere, and it's by a character you wouldn't think they'd put on an album like this. Can you guess the three singles off of this album? It's Do the Barman has to be one of them. That's number one. Yeah. Um, I'm looking I just want this. to see if I can. Oh, man. Uh... That one's the easy one. Um, that was the first single released, November of 1990. Uh, deep, Deep Trouble? That's number two. Okay, because those songs are very much similar. <laughs> Just so right yes. Uh, and then I want to guess, because this is the one that was on the show, Moan and Lisa Blues. Is that the other one? That's, uh, my, that's my guess for three. No. Oh, well, what was the third one? Uh, God Bless the Child. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I I thought they were the same song. <laughs> cool look. Yeah, God God bless the child. Yeah. But are we ready, Johnny? Yeah, we're ready as we're ever going to be. Let's well, do the Bart Man. Yep, track number one, do the Bart Man. Uh, this is a nostalgia classic. I remember. It is. I want to yeah, say yeah. Fox did something big for this. I think they had to have, right? Like uh, a music like video a whole... or something? Yes, and there's like a whole dance too, right? Yeah, but I don't I don't think anybody ever did the dance. Like I remember this I think the only time I ever saw music videos not on MTV was what was it? Black and white, the Michael yep. Jackson one, and I want to say do the Bart man. Now, I hadn't listened to this song in a while. I'd forgotten that it was so much 90s rap. That's all it is. Yeah, uh, it isn't blues. That's my first note. Is this isn't blues to open up your blues album, and uh, and then I also said that this is giving me real Shack rap album nightmares. <laughs> I just I put down it's a nostalgia classic, man. Everybody wanted to do that. I definitely have nostalgia for it, for better or for worse. But here's the lyrics that I've. There's also another thing about this album that I think will surprise people if you dig into the lyrics. There's a lot of actually sad things in this. There's oh. a lot of. There's some very heartful, uh, very sweet, loving things in this. There's a, and of course, there's also very funny things in this. But uh, so it says this is Bart talking, and this actually kind of hurt my soul a little bit because like my favorite Bart episodes when when I became older is the ones where like uh, he feels like nobody understands him, right? Like you're not gonna yeah. relate to that. Uh, and he goes, "Now I'm in the house, feeling good to be home." Till Lisa starts blowing that damn saxophone. And if it was mine, you know they'd take it away, but still I'm feeling good, so that's okay. And I think he's right. I think if he was the one blowing on a saxophone, he'd get yelled at. Probably. Yeah. So I felt really bad for him there. I didn't have any lyric notes for this one because it's just I just did the Bart man. Yeah. I didn't reach into the soul of it like I knew Johnny would, so yeah, so uh, what uh, what are you giving this song? I graded each one of these. What did you did you do letter? I did both because I didn't know which one you would do. <laughs> I did letter because I, I thought I, I have letter. I have letter grades. It's an A. It's a nostalgic classic that you could go back on, and I mean, there's a whole music video. This is kind of like the entering of the Bart Simpson hype train that we were all on as kids with water bottles and everything else. <laughs> yeah, it's the first thing I think of is water and, bottles <laughs> and Butterfinger BB. Well, that's only because I still got that nin- that neon green Ninja Turtle. Oh yeah, that thing rules. That I got for like two bucks. That I thought they were gonna charge me twenty for, and the when the guy was like, "It's two dollars," I was like, "Give me that." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, but that's what I think. The, just the random merchandising. I always look at a a property or an IP as what random merchant merchandising did it have with it as well and yeah it had a lot more um for me personally this is despite it being a single and it is it does have nostalgia for me 
Uh, it's one of the weaker songs on this album as a song. <laughs> uh, this the I did like the lyrics already because it's like it kind of comes out of nowhere, where you kind of get into how Bart thinks like that. And I do love that, but I gave this a C. It's an A. It's a nostalgia classic, Johnny. It's no December. This is right up there with uh, "Take It Easy" by the Eagles and stuff. Yeah, this is his Hotel California. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. number, song. number two, we got School Day featuring Buster Point Dexter. Yeah, my first my note on this is it's a three and a half minute long song, and two and a half minutes of those are the same thing over and over. <laughs> I you're gonna hate. I gave it a B plus. I like this one only because once again I remembered it a lot as a kid, and I. Yeah, you also had this album as a kid, and I did not. I want to make that. Yeah, like, you'll have more nostalgia oh, for this. I'm than me. way more nostalgia. I wanted. Yeah. Thank you for doing that because I did want to make that suit. So this was like one of the this I. I really enjoyed this song, and the one line that got me in this is, um, "The guy behind me won't leave me alone," and I was that guy at one point because my friend Mike sat in front of me, and he would play. They made the horrible mistake of giving us laptops our senior year. Yeah. And then putting absolutely no restrictions on them. Yes. So we, had did n- that. so we had Nintendo emulators. Yeah. And uh, he would play track and field. So all of a sudden. Out of all the Nintendo games, he'd play track and field? I, I, I think he was actually on the track team. He was a very athletic oh, okay, guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he. And I just remember sitting there and we would be like typing notes or any, I wasn't, I was playing games too, but we were supposed to be like typing notes and then out of nowhere, you just see him jam on two buttons. I hated those Nintendo games where you had to hit the buttons as fast as possible. I sucked at this. And Trevor, by the way, is a savant. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's either one that like turns the controller and knows how to do everything. Yes. Like he's, it's crazy. Yeah. How oh. fast his thumbs will move. Uh, well, here, here's I the lyrics to, I have for it. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I go ahead. used to like throw stuff at him to mess him up, so he would yeah. have to lift his hand up and back away. So that kind yeah, of, yeah, you, or you like kind of hit his elbow a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah, I get that. Yeah, uh, drop the coin right into the slot. You've got to hear something that's really hot. Don't want your love. You're making romance all day long. You've been wanting to dance. This is a C. This is a C song. <laughs> B. Plus. <laughs> now I know so far I've given these low grades, Andrew. We'll get to a song that I actually listened to twice. I've listened to this album. I listened to it, I think, three times. I gave it uh so that's probably why a lot of this stuff is higher and stuff like that too. Is I listened to it once, like when I was just cleaning, and then uh another time, once again, just kind of sitting around and then when I actually went through and did the grades and everything else, I was actually just kind of more or less listening to it. Yeah. So number three is born under a bad sign. We Reach- get our first actual blues song. Yeah. <laughs> Reaching Homer Simpson. I actually, uh, I feel like this song could have been in roadhouse. Yes. <laughs> I have no, <laughs> do you get that? Okay. Yes. My my thought when I was listening to this yesterday, well, you can hear us playing in a diner. Yeah, like I just see this Roadhouse or uh, Blues Brothers where they go to the country, to yeah, the at country. a bar, some sort of bar or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my mm-hmm. favorite lyric is, uh, "You know, beer and bowling is all I crave. A big bag of pork grinds is gonna carry me to my grave." That was my little bars there. Yeah, I was very happy to finally have a Homer song as well. Uh, the lyrics I have is, I don't like to read. I could hardly write. My whole life has been one big fight. Uh, that was that, Those last two lines are actually pretty deep. And I was like, I get it, Homer, man. <laughs> I get it, dude. <laughs> I relate. I relate. Uh, this was a B. I actually like this song quite a bit. Oh, I gave it an A. 
Cause but I, see, notice I got higher though. I gotta I give yeah, it a higher yeah. grade. I I liked this one too as a kid. I liked the uh, if, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no kind of luck at all. Right. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I kind of like that. Because when you're having a bad day, that's sometimes how you feel. Yeah, because a lot of times, like it feels like bad luck stacks on top of each other. Yeah. Uh, number where are we at four. Yep. Mona Lisa Blues with Lisa. Yeah, Lisa gets her first song. This will be another one. If you watch early Simpsons, you'll definitely recognize this song because it's on an actual episode. This is deep. This song is very deep. Yeah. This is a very deep blue song. Where is the one? My thing was, well, I'm down so low. If I cheered up, I'd still be depressed. That was yes. like, whoa. whoa. Yes, I had those. I had that uh, picked up, but I also liked uh because i actually also feel like this really describes her too my dad acts like he belongs in a zoo i'm the saddest kid in grade number two yes she went uh, she, on that one yeah but this is a class this is another classic song yeah i, I look, definitely remember this episode it's a very deep episode as well uh this is a, a b plus was this the bleeding gums mercy episode i believe so yeah 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 oh did I say what I gave it? You did not. I gave it also a B plus. I didn't oh, agree to one. I didn't want it to at first. I was like, oh, this one so depressing. But then I realized the album is called The Simpsons Sing the Blues. So yeah, you, yeah, have you, some depress- you need a depressing song. Yep. Uh so number five, Deep Deep Trouble. This is definitely this is all Bart. And to go off of it, because this is so old, we are still on side number one. This is the last song on side number one, Johnny. The yes. A side. These are the A sides we we're going with. For all you kids out there that didn't know when cassettes and records had two different sides. Yeah. Uh, my notes for this are another Bart rap song. It sounds very similar to the first one. But uh, I feel it's better than do the Bart man. I and- do too. And the reason is, I like that this song actually tells a whole story. Yeah, like Bart's telling you a story in this rap, and I really like that. Uh, this is, I want to say this is, because I say it all the time, I'm wondering if this is where I got it from, is uh, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. That's the lyrics I have. Da- uh, well, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, deep, deep trouble. Uh, there's also a whole other part there where he gets in trouble because he'd gotten rushed to finish mowing the yard, so he didn't get to go with the, the family. They just left him there. And I'm like, man, you just feel really bad for Bart in this. My favorite. I don't know why, but I always laugh when Homer does the, who was the, now you can't go to the boat show. I don't yes, know. Why. Yes, it's just man. how he says it. Like, if, if you don't, if you don't want to listen to anything, and, but you want to just hear what the hell I'm talking about, just yeah. go listen to Deep Deep Trouble and get to the point where Homer says, now you can't go to the boat show. And then I was thinking, could kids relate to the boat show today? Because I remember at like our local mall, they would do a boat show. And that was kind of like a, it was like a big deal, but because we could walk through the boats. And we, like we were talking before about cars, we're like, oh, I'm going to get me a boat like this as, as an adult. And I've never owned a boat in my life. Yeah, uh, I never cared about boats, never went to a boat show, been to a lot of car shows and a lot of um, uh, air shows. Those, both those things are pretty show. sweet. Yeah, both those things are pretty sweet. So, uh, yeah, this is a really, uh, I thought a really strong song. I really like that it tells a story. This is another B plus for me. I gave it an A plus, Johnny. I get it. I see it, yeah. I gave it the give it the A plus because I do remember listening to this a lot as a kid. Are you ready for some B side? Let's go to the B sides. Song song number six, "God Bless the Child," featuring Bleeding Gums Murphy. Yeah, this is a very mediocre blues song to me. I uh, yeah, this I don't have any lyrics for, and I just straight gave it a C because it's just middle of the road. I don't feel anything for this i just yeah. don't care the strong get smart while the weak ones fade and if i get stumped they'll never make the grade this is a d plus i thought this was one of the weaker songs on the whole album 
this is definitely a skip. Yeah. And I think the only reason why I gave it a C is because nostalgia. Yeah. Not a good song. So let's go uh, to... <laughs> It's, but let's follow it up with a great song. Yeah, this was really good. Um, song number seven, Love to See You Smile uh, with Homer and Marge. And at first I was like, is this Randy Newman? Well, guess what, guys? Randy Newman wrote this. Yes. What a cheat, right? Because this is if you listen to this, you're like, this is Toy Story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And it just, oh, The Simpsons. And you get one of the probably one of the best couples in TV history in Marge and Homer. Gotta be definitely one of the more iconic ones for sure. This is okay. So the first thing I thought about when I was listening to this and after I was done was the episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets the very attractive female co-worker. Yes. Kind of yeah. act like him and they go on vacation, and then all of a sudden she has Marge stay in the room and he does the like the Barry Manilow parody from Mandy, and he's like, "Oh, Marge, you yeah. came and you found me a yes. turkey. Yes, my vacation away from work. This is just a, such a sweet song because they're singing to each other. Uh, the lyrics I have is: "In the summer, in the springtime, winter or fall, the only place I want to be is where I can see you smile." Yeah, uh, it, I love this song. It's an A. It's a very much an A for me. Yeah, I give it an A too, because it's just it. Because you never think they're like this, but you know that they are. Yeah, and I think this song really opened up about that. Like they, Marge is always worried about Homer doing something stupid. Homer doesn't really seem like he appreciates Marge, but then you know that there is. There's a great Weird Al one. Have you heard that one? What, what are you talking about? Or Weird Al. I actually have it in my. Spot. I don't know where he's in an episode. So we're talking about. Yeah, I think he's like in an episode, and I have the song. Uh, he's definitely been in an episode of Simpsons before because I remember seeing it. But Homer and Marge, and it's uh off of the Simpsons, and it's got Weird Al. And he talks about how he took the cheapest flight to get there as soon as possible. It's a great Weird Al thing. Yeah. It's off of the whole lot of original music from the TV show. So I'm guessing it's from that episode. But if you like Weird Al, go check that out. But yeah, and you should one. like Weird Al because he rules. Yeah. yeah. We got to do a Weird Al album. See, that one I would want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but then that's no fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of no fun, the next song is. Oh. <laughs> Springfield Soul Stew, which is like two seconds. And the first time I heard this, I was like, this is Marge doing this. And I was like, okay, this isn't bad. And then the second time when I'm actually listening to it and not just cleaning or anything, I was like, this one sucks. She's just telling you how to make like a blue song or. Yeah, it's like uh, acting like it's a recipe of making a food, but it's uh, making a blue song. Uh, I thought this was not good. Another one of the weaker songs. This was a D for me. Yeah, I give it a D too because it was. It felt like filler. But it follows it up with my Ooh. favorite song on this whole album. This is yeah. And this is titled "Look at All Those Idiots" featuring Jay Montgomery Burns and not sure if it's the white or the black Mister Smithers. I well, it'd be the white one because I think yeah. uh, he changes color pretty early on in the show. <laughs> he changes color. Yeah, it's such a weird thing. Uh, but, um, oh man, if, is... in my opinion, if you're going to listen to any songs on this album, this is the one you should search out if you're only going to listen to one. Yeah, this is number two for me. I, I, say on this, I this is the one I listen to multiple times. I really, really like this song, it's so good. And very much gives you a Simpsons feel. To this, me. I also had the other Simpsons one that came out after this one. What is it? Uh, sing songs in uh, in the key of Springfield. And after I listened to this one, this is probably my first favorite Mr. Burns song. My second one is uh, the one where it's See My Vest. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, I've heard <laughs> that one. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, he's like, see my vest, see my. <laughs> he's like, I really like the vest. And Mr. Smithers, like, I can tell. Yeah, but this one's really great. This kind of 
lays the groundwork i feel even more for what mr burns is as yeah and and some smithers too yes uh look at all those idiots look at all those boobs an office full of morons a factory full of blues is it any wonder that I'm singing the blues? This is an A plus song. Yeah, I love it. The 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 Xerox, their buttocks. Yes, and guess who got... pays the dime? Yeah, <laughs> and he also singles out Homer in this too. Yes, it's the classic uh, Sector Seven G. That's one of my favorite running gags in Simpsons. Is how he always interacts with Homer, but he never remembers him. <laughs> no, he never. Like, did he like live with him almost at one point? Like, he adopted. Well, well, he literally, he literally ran over his son in an episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, yeah, yeah. This one is the best one. Yeah, I love this song. If you're it's looking, fantastic. this is definitely the. Well, I feel it's the second best, but if I'm gonna go overall and not take out a little bit of nostalgia. This is the best one. Yeah. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's A+. Plus. Yeah. A and plus. we follow it up with the last song on the album. Uh, yes. Sibling Rivalry, which is a, just pretty much uh, Bart and Lisa. Yeah, going, going back and forth. They're kind of bickering about each other. But also, there's some sweetness here, too, as well. I uh, I really like this song also. Yes. Because I think if you have a sibling... Older, younger, whatever, you can relate to this song. Yeah. Where I always remember fighting with my brother and then my mother saying, Oh, you guys, you know, you guys are going to be like the bestest of friends when you guys get older. Don't worry about it. Oh, you guys, you guys are not going to know what to do without each other as you get older. Things are going to be different. And I'm like, I, I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And she was right. Like I text them and stuff like that and everything else. Yeah. His Yankees are. Though they just won the one game in the World Series, but all the well, other have, the fans are helping. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, made fun of them for everything else, but yeah, I really I like this one. This one, yeah, I, I have a younger sister, so I'm, I guess I'm the Bart in this. Yes, in my family, but uh, yeah, and I completely get this because we fall all the time. Uh, we're very different people, uh, but you know, she's still my sister, uh, a brother and a sister. We're trying not to boast. But we can't help believing that we'll always be this close. I mean, what a sweet, yeah, sweet line there. Yeah, yeah this is a B plus. This is a very good song. I gave it an A minus. We're kind of in the same ballpark. Yeah, I think it. I don't think if it was like if they put a different song in here, I don't think it would be as good. But I think you needed this for Bart and Lisa because they do some sweet things for each other, like Bart's soul. Yeah, they do like. But on the show, I think this is one of those shows where the the siblings, especially kids siblings, I felt was fair, for a cartoon was fairly realistic yes. because they'd have a lot of moments where they did not get along, uh, but then it'd be intertwined with some really sweet moments where they you actually knew that they cared about each other. Uh, so yeah, I thought the song was pretty great. Uh, this album overall. What would you give us an overall? <sighs> oh no, I I give it I give it a I give it a B plus. I think it's a B for me. the The songs that are really good are very very good. Uh, uh that Montgomery Burns song is my favorite of them all. Uh, that would be my top song if uh, if you're making me pick one, it would be that one for sure. But there's some I really love the Homer and Marge song, and I really like the sibling rivalry song. Uh. What's and your... I really like the one where Bart raps and tells a story. So those are the ones that I like. Those are my highlights. Uh, favorite song is Deep Deep Trouble. Least favorite song is Springfield Suit uh, Soul Stew. Agree. Yeah, that's my least favorite as well. God bless the child. Right after. Yep. The Springfield one. Yep. Agreed. Those are two weakest ones. Everything else, and just go back and listen to Homer say, "Now you can't go to the boat show." <laughs> yes. I don't know why it just. <laughs> It li- it lives rent free in my head right now. That's all I can think about. Like every yeah. time I could do something, now I'm just thinking, oh no, you can't go to the boat to the show. boat show because <laughs> you ran over to sprinkler <laughs> in a low boat. <laughs> they probably would. They probably would. 
because Homer was rushing them to get done in the first place. Yeah. Well, you have to. I. The but then, one, but then, but then Bart kind of ruins it by having all his friends come over. I sent Jehovah's Witnesses to my door one time because this is during my. You sent them to your door. You well, okay. So when you're 19, you can drink in Canada. So the okay, minute yeah. we turn 19, we're five. You know, five minutes away from the board. So the minute yeah. we turn 19, what do you think we're doing? Going to Canada. We're going to Canada. So we go to Canada and we would party. So I'm like 19 or 20 years old. And obviously I'm still living with my mom and my stepdad. And my mom woke me up out of bed and I'm hung over. And she's like, go mow the lawn, go mow the lawn. And I'm like, oh, so I'm mowing the lawn. And then all of a sudden these Jehovah's Witnesses come out of nowhere while I'm trying to like get it to start. And they're like, you know, would you like to talk about your Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ? And I'm like, no, but my parents do. They're right inside. You could just go right in. <laughs> they walked right in. <laughs> I was so pissed. <laughs> That's a great way to get revenge. <laughs> <laughs> I was hungover. I didn't want to. Do you think you want to mow the lawn when you're hungover? No. Canadian no. beer like just kills you because of yeah. The- your alcohol content that's pretty funny yeah yeah no but i was like yeah you could go you could go right inside they're having coffee at the kitchen table just, just yeah they love to talk out. about lord and savior yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the moments where my mother was you could see her upset with me but it was like yeah you got me yeah <laughs> you got me so i think that's how i would be if you did it to me it's like all right yeah. yeah well done it's a good S- little slug clap for you yeah. yeah okay i will say this album i liked it way better than the shack album <laughs> i gotta agree yeah. still to this day though i know i got skills is still on my playlist for the shack diesel yeah so stay tuned we're going to be doing uh, a weird Al album at some point and i'm going to talk and you're into doing the Lion King soundtrack, uh, so stay tuned to those. I'll write that down right now under ideas. Lion King soundtrack. Yeah, that's one of my uh, favorite soundtracks as a kid. I knew every word of that one. We all know what mine is. Yeah, the wonder the the out the, the uh, theme to RoboCop. <laughs> no, Transformers the movie is the greatest soundtrack of all time. It is really good, very strong. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's. This episode of Nostalgia Funhouse. So, Johnny. Yeah. With that being said, and you actually enjoyed this, were you singing the blues when you were done with this or no? I was uh, thinking about all those idiots. Okay. (laughs) A lot of idiots around. You were Uh, probably thinking, what an idiot Andrew is for (laughs) me listen to the Simpsons. I legit think, I know you're smarter than I am. So, if I think you're an idiot, then what (laughs) do I think I am? So, Uh, but yeah, uh, I. I did end up really enjoying this album overall. Yeah, I still liked it. It's definitely better than the Shack one. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I don't think Johnny will ever forgive me for the Shack one. And I love Shack, but that uh, <laughs> that was a tough album to get through. <laughs> not a Christian Leitner, not Alonzo Morning. <laughs> what two shots to throw two guys <laughs> who were no like. Morning would be the closest of those two to having a, any kind of sort of chance against Shaq, but yeah. still, <laughs> no, nothing. I still remember when Brad Miller he tried he almost killed Brad Miller by punch by throwing a punch at him. You remember that? Yeah. Good God! <laughs> oh, uh, let's bring up your Celtic. What's what? who's the Celtics coach? What's his name? Joe uh, Mazula. Mazula. Uh, he's a weird guy. <laughs> He is, but he makes uh, some weird quotes. Okay, so have you have you ever seen Bull Durham? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, so if you remember, there's the part of Bull Durham where Kevin Costner is supposed to be like the mentor to Tim Robbins. Yeah, and Tim yeah. Robbins is still kind of new, but he's like the hot young prospect there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he and uh, Kevin Costner l- looks at him and goes, "You got mold on your shower shoes." Tim Robbins like whatever he was like you can't have mold on your shower shoes he's like when you make it into the big leagues and maybe you win and you win a bunch of games and you win a championship then you can have mold on your shower shoes because then it's something fun it's quirky look at this guy he's like but right now you can't do that 
And that's how I look at Joe Missoula. At first, I was like, yeah, he's a he's an interesting guy, but he won a championship. So he's allowed to be quirky. Oh, man. But these that's how I look quirky. at things, though. It, like he just came out uh, recently and said that uh, he's really uh, he really wishes that the NBA would uh, just let fighting be a thing like it is in hockey, <laughs> which part of me is like, that would be very funny. Uh, did he ever <laughs> see poor um, Rudy Tom getting his face destroyed by Kermit Washington? Yeah. That's... Yeah, literally, if you look into that, the listeners, there was a time this guy playing basketball, he ended up being a pretty good coach for the Houston Rockets. Uh, Rudy Tom, uh, I always say his last name wrong, Tom Bonavich, something like that. Just call him Rudy Tom. That's yeah, he I'm gets careful. he got punched in the face so hard that he literally, he legit almost died. <laughs> yeah. Kermit Washington destroyed him. Yeah, he got, fa- he got punched in the face by Kermit. Yeah. <laughs> It about died. It was one of the craziest things in the world. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for listening. We appreciate all of you. Andrew, what are we doing next week on the Nostalgia Open House? We are going to gather, I don't know how many, ever how many you want to gather, 10, 6, 5, whatever. Uh, Survivor Series teams. That yeah, are- for wrestling. Uh, Survivor Series, we're going to be... Uh, doing that so uh, uh join us for that and i like how andrew uh, his numbers a lot of people go up like five four five six ten but andrew at ten six five uh, oh, i love that uh, uh but yeah we're gonna be numbers. talking about survivor series teams and we'll probably do one of uh i think we should also do a very fun thing where we draft our own team okay yeah because we're just looking at the worst survivor series teams that even if they made sense then don't make sense now yeah yeah and like some are a, just uh, american flag undertaker yeah and we'll talk about how mr kennedy got fired uh for just giving a suplex to randy orton or Randy orton didn't like it kennedy so, yeah I kennedy to the echo when you said yep i love it <laughs> yeah i was um, a la- i'm a laps fan during the mr kennedy era i barely remember because i was becoming laps during i that took era. yeah like a 14 year hiatus after the, after what? Isn't that everybody in pro wrestling? Like, I feel like you come back and you leave and you come back a lot when it comes to wrestling. I remember coming back and going, what did they do to Kane? I was like, Marlon oh, yeah. and the Godfather looking at, uh, looking at James Conn after he got shot up. I'm like, what did they do to my boy? Oh, he's trying to get Lita pregnant. I don't know what their issue is here. No, this was corporate Kane. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'd I'm already that far. Break yeah, <laughs> that's when I was like, what is going on here? Kane should not be corporate. No, no. Uh, but, yeah, but we appreciate all y'all listening. To Make sure you check out all our social medias uh, on Facebook and on Instagram. Andrew does a phenomenal job on those. Uh, join that growing community there, especially on Facebook. We appreciate all y'all. And with that being said, what may not be nostalgia for you may be nostalgia for some. And look at all these idiots.